my YouTube channel. If there's anything I know about, it's mining, of course. Well, not really. But what I can tell you about is building, because I know so much. Uh, wait, what? Am I supposed to, like, pull this apart or something? Fine, fine. But what I can offer you is some financial services. Well, not really. I'm just a kid. Whatever. Today we're going to be talking about economic sectors. So this is GTC Economics 1.22 on economic sectors. I've made uh, four other videos before this um, on 1.11, 1.12, 1.13 and 1.21, which you can check out up there. But today we're going to be looking at the economic sectors. Let's start by defining what an economic sector is. Think of it as a big economy pizza. What do you like on your pizza? Comment below. But there are some certain things on the this economy pizza, which we will get to later. But you can think of each sector as like a slice of this pizza. There are three main economic sectors. The primary, the secondary, and the tertiary sector. And if you think this is starting to sound like the colours on the colour wheel in art, it is similar to that in some ways, which we will get to later. Starting with the primary sector, I'm going to use this diamond ore to show the, the primary sector, because the primary sector is concerned with the extraction of raw materials, so it's like materials that haven't been processed yet. That's like this ore, because the primary sector can include things like mining, like the ore, and fishing and agriculture, like the cow. The primary sector is generally the largest of the three in less developed economies. But for economies like here in the UK, which is more developed, with higher labour productivity, so that's when the labour is more productive, as it sounds, they can move on to other sectors like the other two, the secondary and tertiary sectors. That's why here in the UK, only about 3% of the labour force is engaged in agricultural production. And overall, the primary sector only makes up about 12% of GDP. Now, if GDP sounds a bit unfamiliar to you, it stands for Gross Domestic Product, which is basically the value of everything that the country produced in one year. Moving on to the secondary sector, I'm going to use this block right here, which is a crafting table from Minecraft, to represent this sector. This is because this sector is often called the manufacturing sector because it takes the raw materials from the primary sector and converts them into finished products. So it's turning these raw materials into finished products that people can use. Now, as I said earlier, more primitive economies focus on their primary sector because that requires less human capital, which, if you remember, is the knowledge and skills of a person. In developed economies, there's more people around with human capital and with that human capital comes the ability to transform the raw materials into items of more value, like this, right? It takes some skill, not in Minecraft, but in the real world, to turn these raw materials into the final products that you can sell for more of a price. Now, if we look at the historical past of the UK economy, we can learn a lot about the development of these economies. So, Pre-18th century, um, the UK was primarily based on agriculture, which is the primary sector, um, until we came to the Industrial Revolution. This era came with new technologies like the steam engine, which enabled a quicker growth of the secondary sector. So this is where the UK economy moves from a more primary sector-based economy to a secondary-based economy. It's moving through the ages. So, as I was saying, the UK was one of the first to go through this industrialisation age, but it's also one of the first to go through a de-industrialisation age. This is because since the approximately the 1970s, the percent of GDP that the secondary sector makes up has gone down over time, from almost 40% down to just above the primary sector percentage, which is about 12-15%. to 15%. This has happened because instead of making these final products in their own economy, the UK has opted to use the globalisation that has happened over the past century to trade and import items from China, Europe, 
um, America, Canada and other um, countries around the world. So it's more than probable that the manufacturing sector, that is to say the secondary sector, is probably going to become less and less of a percentage of the entire economy in the UK. Now moving on to the third and final sector, which is the tertiary sector. I'm going to use Steve here with the diamond sword as my object to show the tertiary sector. Just remember this guy. This is because the tertiary sector is uh, commonly known as a service sector because it's comprised of firms offering intangible goods such as entertainment, re retail, insurance, tourism and banking which is why I was saying at the beginning financial services. So firms in the tertiary sector will make use of manufactured goods but there is an additional component which is the offering of service to customers. A more real world example would be like a cafe selling coffee. It is making use of the raw material from the primary sector, which is like the coffee beans that they use to make the coffee, as well as manufactured goods such as espresso machines, cups and saucers and other things like that. So in a developed economy like the UK, the service sector is the biggest component of the entire economy. It comprises of nearly 80% of GDP and a similar ratio of employment. So that's the three main economic sectors. I just want to touch on briefly a sort of fourth economic sector that some people recognise. Um, it's the quaternary sector. This is made up of things like education, the public sector and research and development. But all in all, that's it. The three or four sectors of the economy. Now there's just another thing that we want to touch on because this is part of the content of this topic in GCC economics. It is the goods and services. Now I have touched on this in a previous video, so this is another good reason why you should watch my entire course because so that you don't miss out on any information. So a good is an item, a tangible item usually, like um, like this, this um, Minecraft block that we have, that's a good. Um, and it's something that satisfies human wants. And a service is like an intangible good, um, which is basically products that you can't really drop on your foot, something that's not made out of something. It's like um, a transaction where uh, no physical goods are transferred from the seller to the buyer. And that's all you need to know for this topic in GCSE Economics. But don't go anywhere because we've still got a few things to do. Firstly, if you found this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe below. Especially if you're doing your GCSE economics course, you should turn on notifications so that you get notified when I release new GCSE economics content, which I will be doing in the coming weeks. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh, you stayed around? Well, you can always just leave this video right now by clicking on the next GCSE economics video right here. If you're not on the playlist, click right here. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications right here. Here. Also, previous video here if you haven't watched it. Anyway, I hope you have a nice day.